in the last <laughs> few days, right, we've looked at compound functions, right? Compound functions. So we have seen two results in particular. Two results in particular. So if you have a function that is a, oops, wrong letter. Um, if you have a function f that is a sum of two other functions. Okay. If you want the derivative of this, it's not that difficult. You just take the two different functions that make up the sum, you differentiate them independently. No problems. Okay, we established that. The other one we established, which is very, very simple, was if you have something which is a multiple of another function, okay, if you want to differentiate that, you want to know the derivative of the whole thing, you just, in some ways, you ignore what that multiple is. It just hangs out on the side. It doesn't, it doesn't affect what the derivative will do. And you just differentiate the other thing. And everything comes out in the wash. Okay. You may recall that our, um, our verbal summary of this first result in particular, which is quite important, our verbal summary of this is that the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, right? It's nice, it's catchy, very easy to remember, and it's a, it, it matches the simplicity of the result, okay? Now, therefore, being that maths all our patterns, right? It seems logical, at least, for a time, to think if the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, it kind of is logical to say, if what I have is not a sum, but a, well, a sum is really a kind of difference, just with a negative, right? If what I have is a product, if I want to find the derivative of a product, like thinking about what we can put in here, it's not that, you know, outlandish to think that possibly the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives. That's, you know... You could draw worse conclusions off of that, like I'm trying to continue the pattern, okay? But, this is why there's a question mark here, there are some serious problems with this approach, okay? Now, when you're trying to prove something um, in, in any kind of science, including mathematics, right? You don't try and find examples of, of your result, right? You need to find counterexamples. Because if you can find a counterexample of something, you only need a single counterexample to show that whatever you thought was not actually the case, right? So if you want to know something's true, you just try and disprove it. And then you'll really know, okay? So let's consider this. Let's consider this. We have actually already been working with products, functions that are products. Here's a really simple example I showed some of you earlier. Consider this guy. This is a product, right? Now, we already have dealt with powers of x, so you can differentiate this already. I don't need to do any fancy stuff like this, okay? You know what the answer is. Which is exactly why now, if we think about this, we're gonna write it as a product, and because I've got x's flying around, rather than using crosses for notation, I'm just gonna use a dot. That's x times x, okay? If I consider f as this product of functions, okay? If I consider, like, what might happen if this were true, question mark, you start to run into some serious problems, right? If you imagine that the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives, well, I know what the derivative of x is. It's 1. I know what the derivative of that x is. It's 1. Um, something's gone wrong. <laughs> Because clearly, clearly, uh, fix it, see, stop. Anyway. Um, I have some problems. I, it didn't take me very long to think of a counterexample, right? Though the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, quite clearly, the derivative of a product cannot be the product of the derivatives. It doesn't work. The pattern would have been nice, but it's not working for us, okay? So now, I'm going to show you what it is equal to, okay? I will... Do this. Okay. Uh, this this here is is false. Okay. If what you have, if your function, oh, no, I'm gonna I'll make it y this time. If your function is the product of two other functions, so you can see by the way, th these are the same thing. Okay. I'm just leaving off the fact that they're functions of x. I'm just gonna imply that to you. Okay. If you have a product of functions, then the derivative that you're actually after 
is not just u dash v dash. In fact, it is v u dash plus u v dash, uh, which my year my year eleven teacher taught me is a vuv. So there you go. That's why that's why that's why we abandoned f's and g's because otherwise you'd say it's a it's a fugif, which doesn't roll off the tongue at all. <laughs> vuv isn't much better. Not even a real word, but whatever. Okay, there you go. <laughs> The derivative of a product is not simply the product of the derivatives. It's not. It's this more complicated thing here. Now, by the way, remember I said to you, I'm not a huge fan of this dash notation, right? If I were to write this without dashes, it would look like this. V du on dx. That's what u dash really means. Plus u dv on dx. That's what it really means. But as you can see, and as I alluded to before, right, this is something you want to pull out like that. You don't want to have to run, 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 run. and this just kind of, this is very easy to remember, right? And that's powerful, right? Like this is more descriptive, but this is easier to access, right? And so sometimes you're going to go for that. Right? Yes? And from the one time someone has the crying face. No, 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 that's not the crying face. This is the crying face. Okay. Um, I remember writing this on a paper feedback, and someone said, what, "What's t dot t mean?" I'm like, oh. anyway. Uh,